The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey there, nice to see you again. It's time for the Bronx Buzz. This is Bronx Nets program where we talk to reporters, editors, writers, journalists, um, all different people who are putting stuff out, photographers, filmmakers. And uh, this evening, we're going to be talking to an author who has a new book. It's actually a new young adults book. But uh, before we do that, we are going to talk to uh, the senior reporter and editor covering housing and homelessness for City Limits. Welcome back, David Brand. Nice to have you with us. Thanks for having me back on, Gary. David, you've written about um, evictions and moratoriums. And as I told you before the show, I really follow this stuff. We've had a Supreme Court decision involving this. And I really, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm thanking my lucky stars that I'm not in the situation <laughs> wondering if, you know, I'm going to be evicted. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just not in that particular situation. But I think if I was... I wouldn't know which way is up. And I have to tell you, if I was a property owner, I also wouldn't know. So maybe um, we're recording this, uh, let's see, on, on um, Monday the 23rd. If you could tell us where we are at now as we're looking at the potential August 31st deadline um, in terms of uh, housing, who's in danger, who's not in danger, what are we going to do? Let me know. Thanks. <laughs> You're definitely not alone in feeling confused about this. And I think the changing landscape when it comes to eviction protections going back to right at the very beginning of the pandemic in mid-March 2020 when uh, the state court system and and I guess we could say then governor Andrew Cuomo enacted the first eviction moratorium. That was a little more than 18 months ago. Since then, it's just been kind of a constantly changing uh, series of eviction protections, protections that cover some renters and not others. Now we have the emergency rental assistance program up and running, which is providing back rent to landlords whose low income tenants uh, weren't able to make their rent for during the pandemic and they have to prove as a result of the pandemic. But that program has been slow to uh, start cutting checks to, to landlords. And so there's a lot of confusion but let's start here, I guess. Recently, this, the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, heard a case involving New York's former eviction moratorium that allowed tenants facing eviction proceedings to present what was called a financial hardship declaration. And just by signing that form, presenting it to a judge, you could effectively halt an eviction. The Supreme Court decision gets rid of that as a, an automatic stay of your eviction proceedings. And so landlord groups are welcoming that because now they can right. proceed or bring new eviction cases, but still it's not going to trigger an immediate wave of evictions. And I visited Bronx Housing Court, one of the busiest housing courts in New York and in the country recently, and there weren't many people there. I spoke with people who work at uh, Bronx Works next door and Bronx Works is officially tasked by the state and by the city to help low-income tenants apply for rental assistance. And they are overlooking Bronx Housing Court. The director there, Scott Arwater, said, you know, once you see this line going down the block, wrapping around the block on Grand Concourse, then you'll know Housing Court's back. That hasn't happened yet. So there's still, you know, pretty jammed uh, calendars for Housing Court judges. Things are moving slowly. There are various protections for tenants, even with that Supreme Court decision. Um, I would encourage any tenant who is in that position, though, they receive an eviction notice, uh, they're worried to contact an organization like Bronx Works, which, again, has a contract from the city funded by the state to help people apply for emergency rental assistance. So if you're someone who owes back rent, just simply by making that application, you can not only ensure that rent gets covered, but you also can delay eviction protections. And then if your landlord uh, receives money 
through that program, the landlord then has to keep you as a tenant for at least one other year. So that's definitely a way to, to remain in place, to remain housed. And these nonprofit providers in the Bronx, it's Bronx Works, are helping tenants make those applications. You know, I, I just want to say as an aside, I think you're the first person I've heard referring to Andrew Cuomo as the former governor. <laughs> so I, I appreciated that. It, it, it was accurate. I mean, I don't know yeah. if you count the days. It's only a matter of moments. Uh, yeah, um, but, it's like six that, hours from now, I guess, yeah, we're recording this on that, Monday. That yeah. right. To me, in terms of solving the problem and not even looking at um, uh, – tenants who could be evicted or who have not been paying their rent um, uh, ostensibly because of you know lost wages or whatever during the pandemic. If you're going to solve this problem, then you need monies to go to the property owners because mm -hmm. You know, they shouldn't be hurt because my vision is they shouldn't be hurt. And if you do, if, if they are hurt, then you're really good because many of them are decent people and decent landlords. You are really going to collapse the housing system because there'll be no way to do it. So as I understand, um, there's like two billion dollars in federal assistance um, that will help. Um, but then, of course, there's all the talk about the money not getting to where it needs to go. Is is that where are we at with that? Um, and, and is you know why is it getting so slow? See, and part of that could be what you said, the paperwork here. And I'm thinking from a tenant's point of view to file this stuff. Uh, my goodness, it, that alone is a full time job to <laughs> figure out what papers you need. You may need assistance. You may need a so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just showing my own exasperation and for the different levels here. So how do you sort out what I just said about making sure that funding gets to where it needs to go? Mm -hmm. Well, again, you're not alone in that exasperation <laughs> because uh, a lot of tenants, a lot of landlords and a lot of lawmakers are feeling that same frustration. And so there has been past two weeks, two legislative hearings, one by the state assembly, one by the state senate pressing the commissioner of the office of temporary and disability assistance which is the state agency tasked with administering the rental assistance program basically asking what's taking so long applications open june 1st that was already later than a lot of people would have liked because the program was created in the april state budget it took about two months to get just applications opened after that it took yeah it took another month and a half for the first checks to go out to landlords and so right now they have issued as of, I think last Thursday, about $150 million. Sounds like a lot, but then when you look at a $2.2 .2 billion program, it's really only about 7% of the yeah, money. Right. And so people are getting antsy. Landlords, you mentioned, especially small property owners, have many have not received rent since March of 2020. This is an opportunity to make them whole allow them to cover their mortgage, their property taxes, and yet the money is still trickling. So I, I, You use the word trickling, and I was just going to say the trickle down of it. <laughs> if you look at what the trickle down would be, would be a property owner to say, well, then I can't fix the, the plumbing in the building, or I can't whatever, can't uh, put up new security doors or whatever. Mm -hmm. it is. I got no money. So I understand that. Now, let me just switch gears and look at the perspective from a tenant. Um, I, I, and I want folks who may not be in that situation, um, which includes me, I can't d deny that, somebody who's living on that edge in April and hears that the budget, you know, that, that oh, okay, but now still doesn't know what to do till June. And here we are, August is climbing into September when the deadline is there. In addition to living in a situation where you don't have money and you're always you're, you, maybe you didn't have a job or you lost your job and you're wondering how you're going to pay your rent. You don't have any answers. I, 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 it's, it, it strikes me as chaos. And the, one of the numbers you reported um, that there were 130,000 pending eviction cases. Uh, Mr. Alwater, who actually was on our show many, many years ago, um, which is how long he's been doing these things, He's totally right. Once once the, the door, the floodgates get open, yeah, you're going to see lines all the way around housing court. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that 130,000 eviction cases that was pre pandemic. And, and that's a that's kind of a moving target and because the Office of Court Administration will say, well, many of those 
cases that were filed, the, the tenant and the landlord resolve out of court, the tenant makes the payments they need to make uh, mm -hmm. or agrees to leave. And so they don't go through housing court, but still there was about 50,000 just before the pandemic. And now we, here we are 18, 19 months later, people have still, landlords have still been able to file eviction cases and right. others that would have otherwise filed, filed eviction cases haven't because they know it's going to take a while. And so like, why waste your time doing it then when there's all these uh, protections in place? And so I think eventually we are going to see even more that are filed. And I think we're starting to see it now more gradually. But that's what people are concerned about. Landlords I, I, not getting paid, tenants facing absolutely. homelessness. And, and I have to tell you, you know, you, you I don't want to say threw out the number, but you said 50,000. I want all of us to think about 50,000 cases you, you know what that's like? You know, you know it's like the, the, the pile of letters in North 134th Street that they dumped <laughs> on the court's desk and yeah. said, here's all the letters from Santa. That is, that is just, I, I, so I'm, I'm not sure how to unravel this chaos in the long run, combined with what I've expressed, sympathy for tenants, certainly, um, and sympathy for landlords. One last thing, we got about a minute, minute and a half. Um, there is concern about two things. One is fraud, that people who genuinely do not need the kind of support and they think it's like a, you know, a free payday, no rent for a little while. And number two, there may be people who lost their jobs, but eventually did get work, but that got kind of lost. So they're, I, I hate to use the word gaming the system. I'm sure that there is suspicion about it. And that's also something that's going to have to be unraveled. Yeah, you, you hear some of those nightmare scenarios, and there's no doubt about it. I talk to a lot of landlords who have really huge problems with, with tenants who they say are taking advantage. But I, you know, I think that's still a small percentage in the long run, and that there are so many people who maybe lost work for a few months and in that time fell behind on rent. Maybe they got work back, but still owe rent from... March, from April, from June, and maybe they can keep up currently or they can pay a portion, but there's still that unpaid rent that's, uh, you know, following them and that right. they need. And, and I think that's who this program is really supposed to, to, to help to really bail out the landlords, protect the tenants. Uh, David Brand, um, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I'm a big believer in media and the importance of what you are doing with City Limits and City Limits commitment to informing the public about this um, is incredibly valuable. You've helped me understand a little more. And I know for people um, who you know want to want to learn more, uh, it's David Brand and um, City Limits. Go to citylimits.org. Check you, when they do topics, go for housing, and you can find out about all this stuff. We need you, David. We thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Uh, David Brand, senior reporter, editor, covering housing and homelessness for City Limits. Um, we'll see you next time when we can catch you on the Bronx Buzz. We'll watch how it goes, and then we'll bring it back. We'll have to check back in. Thanks for having me. Always great to be here. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a, a short break. We're going to switch gears, and we're going to bring in an author who uh, writes for young people, and um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Don't go away.